This mini lecture on health in health and safety is one of a group of lectures provided for the London South Bank University's Occupational Health Nursing degree program. Hello, I'm Joe Kitney and a visiting teaching fellow at the London South Bank University. The subject of ensuring health in health and safety is large, and so I've actually split this across two mini lectures and information sheets. This video is part one, which focuses on explaining what the health in health and safety means and the importance of goal setting to lay down how health and safety will be managed in an organisation or business. The second video of health in health and safety looks at the more practical side of how to fit health into health and safety and business management. You can download the information sheet that accompanies this mini lecture from the Kitney Occupational Health and Safety website www.kitney.com Com. So a quick search on the internet shows us that the theme of putting, or how to put, health in health and safety is commonly found. There are articles written on the subject, and it's often included as a topic within conferences and seminars, not just within the UK, but overseas also. Having worked in health and safety for over 20 years now, I can tell you that this topic is not new. As a newly graduated occupational health nurse in the mid-1990s and attending one of my first conferences, I recall listening to a presentation and a debate on the subject. What has perhaps changed in the last 20 years is the context of how health in health and safety is discussed. There's been a shift from occupational health practitioners asking where health is and proposing that it should be included in health and safety to the discussion across industry on its importance and how health and safety can be included and managed at work. A look back at the history of health and safety gives us some insights into why it's taken a while for health at work to find its place. In the early days of health and safety legislation, regulators, unions and workers' representatives were mainly concerned with securing a safe workplace and work practices to pre prevent the fatalities and significant injuries that workers experienced. The health of workers was mainly managed by doctors and nurses and health references in health and safety legislation was aimed primarily at managing health hazards and monitoring workers' health. And so the separation of occupational health and safety and the focus on compliance began. However, as, as workplaces have become safer, knowledge on health effects of work and the importance of employees being fit for work has grown, the attention on managing health at work has increased. But this still leaves some asking, what do we mean by health in health and safety? This slide here shows this in its simplest form. Health plus safety equals health and safety. If we take a closer look at this, we can see on the slide the types of areas that health and safety are concerned with. For health, this is very much focused on people and includes managing health hazards and the effects of work on health, fitness and capabilities for work, on managing the effects of workers' health in the workplace, and on promoting wellness and well-being at work. For safety, this tends to focus on the workplace, plant and processes of work. For example, ensuring equipment is suitable and in good working order, electrical safety, fire and emergency equipment and arrangements, and storage of chemicals and dangerous goods. Now, of course, health and safety shouldn't be separated from each other. They are, after all, trying to achieve the common goal of a safe workplace, safe work practices and a safe work environment. However, health extends out beyond compliance and looks at how people can be best managed and their health and well-being protected as well as promoted. To be effective and give the best advantage to the workplace, health and safety have to work together. Now, a model that was introduced to me in my occupational health nursing degree back in the early 1990s is the four P's. This is a very simple but useful tool and a good prompt to ensuring that health and safety is considered. On the slide, you can see the four P's as people, plant, process and premises. These are the four main areas that health and safety needs to focus on in the workplace. An example of how the four P's work together would be chemicals at work. They need to be stored safely and used safely 
and, if hazardous to health, workers' health and the environment may need to be monitored. Similarly, for noise management and hearing protection, this may involve purchasing quieter equipment, isolating and securing noisy areas, preventative maintenance to keep plant and equipment in good working order, and workers using hearing protection and having hearing tests to check that noise controls are working effectively. You can see from these two examples that health and safety must be looked at as an overall approach to management within which different actions are needed and different people may have different roles. A health and safety manager or officer may be responsible for general health and safety, whilst an occupational health physician or nurse may be responsible for health monitoring and surveillance. From a company perspective, these two need to work together towards the common goals of managing hazards and risks and preventing ill health and injury. When we think about ensuring health in health and safety, there are a few ways to look at this. We can look at how to get health into the company's health and safety management system. We can look at the types of services that may be offered, programs or initiatives that may be run. But from experience, one of the most important areas to cover is to agree on the organisation or the company's goals for health and safety. Goals are used by organisations to focus on an outcome that's needed. So whether it be meeting business goals, ensuring legal compliance, preventing ill health or injury, raising awareness and developing a good safety culture. By agreeing on a goal or number of goals, it brings the organisation to a common understanding of what it wants to achieve and gives direction to those working in the organisation on what they need to do to help achieve this. Organisational goals are generally set by top management from which departmental or section area goals can be set. The aim of the goal is to very much reflect what the organisation or work areas want to achieve. From this, action plans, services and programmes should be aimed at achieving that goal. From a health and safety perspective, achieving a goal or a number of goals is really important. This would ideally be signed off at an organisational level by top management, something that defines an outcome and gives directions to the actions that will be taken to achieve the outcomes needed. There may be some rationale or reason for the goal, but ideally these would fit within other organisational goals. It's the agreement on this that ensures health and safety will contribute to the wider organisational goals and targets. The goal will also define actions and plans, and there's no one size fits all, and it's really up to the organisation or business to decide on the goal or number of goals that best suits what they are hoping to achieve. So if there is a goal that focuses on safety, such as securing a safe and healthy workplace, then the chances are there'll be a higher focus on safety. If the goal is to meet legal obligations and to prevent accidents and in health, the focus will again be on compliance and with health included where it's legally required, such as for health surveillance. If a goal though is set to reflect the wider reasons for managing health at work, it's more likely that the organisation will manage health as part of its health and safety. An example of a goal that talks to both health and safety would be securing a safe and healthy workplace and workforce. This reference to a healthy workforce goes beyond compliance and looks at the importance of having a healthy workforce to deliver on some of those broader business goals. Given that workers are one of the company's greatest assets and at times greatest costs, having a healthy workforce will significantly contribute to HR capability and productivity, which links health firmly with people and HR management. Setting goals certainly isn't easy. Some managers may disagree, but it's also really important. So we know that goals set the basis for future discussion about budgets, services, and where attention will be focused. So once the goals have been set, agreed and approved, it's then much easier to understand the purpose of managing health at work for an organisation and how this will happen. Following goal setting, the next step is to take these and put them as the basis for managing health at work. This might mean adding health into the health and safety management system or manual. It may mean establishing a health management service. And importantly, it links health across other areas of the organisation, such as HR.
So this draws us to the end of this mini lecture at which we've looked at how to ensure the health and health and safety. We looked at what health and safety means and the importance of goal setting as a reference point and base. In part two of this mini lecture, we'll look at how health can fit within an organisation's health and safety management system or manual. We'll look at the spectrum of ill health and injury within the workplace and the opportunities within the cycle of employment to manage health and ill health at work. Thank you for taking the time to listen. The information sheet that goes with the mini lecture can be downloaded from www.kitney.com.